Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the last day of, of KubeCon and kind of one of our, you know, traditions to kind of make the, you know, uh, our technical board, the TOC, kind of uh, more open and welcome to all as we generally host this TOC session to kind of explain, you know, how we work as an organization and have an opportunity to uh, meet folks that are on, on the TOC. So, um, you know, we have technically 11 people on the TOC. Not everyone is here physically uh, with us, but we have a good uh, representation here. Um, I will go and, you know, start introducing uh, everyone here and they can kind of talk a little bit about uh, who they are, which, uh, what company uh, they work for or what project they're involved in. Let's go start with Richie. Okay, um, yeah, I'm Richie. Uh, in the context of here, um, yeah, Prometheus team member is probably the most important one. Hello, everyone. Katie Gamanji. I'm currently working for Apple and end user organization. And this is my second term as a TOC. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, this is Dims. Um, I do some stuff in Kubernetes. Uh, uh, I, shouldn't, I should stop saying that because I'm <laughs> no longer on the steering committee. Uh, I work on several um, SIGs in uh, Kubernetes community, and uh, my employer is uh, Amazon Web Services. I'm Justin Cormack. I'm at Docker. Um, we're, in, uh, we're involved in a whole bunch of projects, uh, distribution, notary, um, uh, container D. I'm, 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 I'm a, we're a, very developer focused now, so we're, I'm interested in the fact that we've got a lot more developer focused projects coming into CNCF. And I've also I've been worked with tag security for a long time. Hi, my name is Kaisi Zhang. Um, I have been working at the you know, serverless projects and also serverless related projects and also Kubernetes projects. Yeah. Hi, I'm Matt Farina. I work over at SUSE and we contribute to a number of. Uh, the various projects. I've worked on Helm and Kubernetes and Artifact Hub. Um. Right, so I'm Ricardo, I'm a computer engineer at CERN and I'm in the TOC as an end user uh, representative. My name is Emily Fox. I'm a security engineer at Apple. I am a security liaison for the, in the TOC to tag security and I do a lot in the community and various foundations. Cool, thank you. And for the folks that couldn't attend, I think Dave, uh, Dave Zolo is uh, at Spotify, been heavily involved in the backstage project. Uh, Aaron Boyd, who is at, uh, uh, no, Red Hat now, back at Red Hat, uh, has been involved in a lot of storage uh, projects. And then uh, Harry um, Zeng from, from Ali, who can't, can't make it uh, here. But uh, this is kind of our group of uh, folks that overall decide the technical uh, direction and vision uh, for the organization. So um, I'll do kind of a brief kind of refresher for folks, uh, you know, that don't really know how CNCF is structured. This is kind of how the sausage is made and less interesting, in my opinion, but does give you kind of an important insight of how the organization is structured. So, you know, my, my name is, you know, Chris Anizik. I serve as the CTO of the organization. I helped uh, start it about seven um, years ago. And the way the organization is structured, you know, you basically have a separation between business governance and technical governance. So there is a board of directors, a governing board that decides basically, you know, the overall kind of, you know, how the budget is spent, how the overall strategy for the organization goes and, and kind of is shaped over, uh, over time. It's mostly consisted of vendors, um, you know, that kind of build products on Kubernetes and other CNCF projects. Uh, there are some end users uh, there. Um, so they handle like the boring business stuff in my perspective. You have the technical oversight committee or TOC as we call them. Um, the 11 folks that generally have worked on uh, you know, CNCF projects or have deep technical expertise in, in some domain. Um, they are the folks that decide which projects get into the organization, which projects get archived. They decide the overall technical kind of strategy and vision uh, for the org, and they kind of act as a, a resource uh, and a liaison between projects, the board, and kind of, um, you know, and also mentors to, to kind of help projects um, out. And then we have an end user kind of uh, group that essentially represents end users, people who are billing, building and using um, you know, CNCF projects in interesting ways, but actually not selling them. No, they're not selling cloud native services or they're not really vendors. So this kind of three weird, three ring circus makes up uh, the, the CNCF and the TOC is kind of, I, I view in the middle uh, of it kind of bridging uh, the gaps between these um, organizations. So one thing that the TOC does is help you know, come up with a set of principles. Um, this was recently uh, refreshed. Thank you very much. I think it was Emily that did a lot of that uh, work, so appreciate uh, that. But uh, in some, you know, to kind of summarize things, you know, the 
organization, you know, tends to put, you know, we're, we're project maintainer first. So we're very project uh, centric. You know, each project kind of operates on its own. Um, projects are self-governing, which uh, for you who may have, you know, uh, had experience with other open source foundation, whether it's like an Apache or an Eclipse or OpenStack, CNCF is a little bit different where uh, we kind of leave projects to their own devices to kind of come up with their own way to operate, which is, you know, could be a little bit confusing, but gives people the flexibility uh, to operate. Some have steering committees, some don't. Some have a flat list of maintainers, some have senior maintainers. So uh, projects are very self-governing in how they run and operate. Um, what does the TOC look for? Uh, in general, they're generally looking for high-quality velocity projects, but everyone has their own uh, you know, preferences. Uh, the other big thing uh, here is there's a philosophy around no kingmakers. So um, you know, generally, we allow competitive projects. So there's uh, I can't even count how many service meshes anymore. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of GitOps projects. There's a little overlap uh, in competition. The, old, the whole idea is to, you know, not have just one prescriptive, uh, you know, solution. Allow kind of competition and allow the market to kind of, uh, you know, flourish and kind of decide what is, uh, what is, what is best. Um, we're not really a, a traditional standards body, so we don't really do long international ISO style standards. Uh, we more do de facto standards that are defined by uh, code. Um, ideally, you know, everyone's seen that crazy landscape, love it or hate it, uh, you know, I still have the fun job of maintaining it. Um, the idea is to kind of uh, make sure that we have a comprehensive tool chain that it sits in CNCF that people could use uh, these, you know, wonderful projects to build products or in some other way, uh, kind of fill the gaps is kind of the, the, the attitude we have. And like above all, you know, the TOC kind of wants to stay out of the way. They just want to help projects when, when they need it. So I think this kind of set of principles has served the organization uh, fairly well. And, you know, they're not locked in stone. We could always evolve these if we need to um, over time. A lot of people ask, how do I get involved in this, like, mysterious body uh, sometimes? Well, the best way to get involved is to actually contribute. So we have a variety of technical advisor groups, or we call them TAGs. Uh, they usually represent some topic area, security storage, you know, contributor strategy, observability. These are the best avenues to get involved if you ever want to potentially, you know, run for a TOC seat. Uh, it's a great avenue to kind of get started, uh, in, in, in my opinion. Um, sandbox processes, project processes. So there are three different types of CNCF projects. We have sandbox, incubation, and graduation, and they roughly map to maturity level. Sandbox projects are early stage. They're meant to be experiments. Some fail. Some grow into crazy uh, large projects. Incubation, a little bit more mature. There's probably a little bit more diversity in the project in terms of maintainers, more companies involved. And then graduation, which really is the TOC's like stamp of approval that you know this project is mature, you could bet your business on it and use it and, and not worry too much uh, over, over the long term. So this is kind of the thing that they, you know, as a group control uh, overall to ensure that you know, end users and adopters of software have some type of stamp to look at, right? Um, we do have a brand new sandbox process that was just, uh, you know, refined. Thank you, everyone who worked on that. So uh, we're moving it back to GitHub off of this crazy Google form that we had for a while. So you'll be able to just use the GitHub uh, slash CNCF <coughs> sandbox uh, repo to file um, you know, applications now. And that will be done in a little bit more transparent uh, fashion than it was done uh, before. So. You know, we kind of keep this informal, like, you know, uh, from my time in this organization, a lot of people have asked, like, oh, like, I would love to, like, go meet a TOC member to ask them about, you know, project or some questions. And this is really about kind of lowering that barrier. You know, here we are open to take any questions and, you know, meet folks that may have not, uh, you know, uh, met each other before. So I have some kind of, like, basic questions that I've kind of always asked. I think I'm going to ask a couple. And then, really, I would just like to hear, you know, from the audience of, like, what do you want to ask these folks? You know, anything, you know, uh, you know, anything, you know, dramatic or you know, just like random questions of like, what, you know, you know, what do you think about this? We'll have that uh, option available for you. So, you know, my, um, you know, uh, you know, we've probably accepted, oh, you know, almost close to thirty, you know, or so projects, you know, you know, this year, and, you know, I, I would love to kind of hear the TOC's thoughts on, you know, what, <laughs> it's like. 
Landscape keeps growing, emerging pull requests almost every day uh, on this thing. Uh, what, what, what is missing from like our comprehensive you know, uh, tool chain? Is there something particularly missing that you're interested in that you want to fill and, and see maybe our community help out with? Or is there something that you, know, you think we should focus on kind of like you know, in, the, in the future? So like either like what, what's missing or what do you think are there future directions uh, for us uh, as, as an organization? Anyone want to start with you know, potentially what's missing? Dems? Uh, so, like one pain point uh, we've had for a while is we don't have anything to keep secrets. Um, so th that is probably one thing that if we want to fill the void, we should probably start there. But there's so many things that we need to do and we should be doing. But uh, from the point of view of the users of uh, our ecosystem, uh, they don't really have an option there other than Vault, for example, right now. So we should try to do something about it. Um. I can go next. Um, I think the landscape has been growing a lot throughout the years, and everyone can see that. Um, there are a lot of memes around the vastness of the landscape. However, I think nowadays we reach a maturity level where multi-tenancy has not been solved as a problem that well anymore. There are multiple solutions that have been multiple initiatives to do that. However, we don't have anything comprehensive that is truly open source based and it's not just delegating a problem to a vendor. Um, supposedly you don't have the money to, to do that. So I think that's definitely an area that requires improvement. Another one I would like to mention, and I think it's an ongoing theme, is simplifying developer experience. It is overwhelming to consider how many tools you have to use in production. You're not gonna use just Kubernetes, you're gonna use at least a couple of tools for observability, you have networking, you have storage, you have runtime, secret management, it's just best. Like as an engineer, you need to work with at least 10 tools and this is the minimal viable option for you to, to run a very successful production environment. So in terms of improving and simplifying the developer experience, I think that still requires a bit of work from, from our community. YAML is great, but maybe we need to look at the next best thing and try to include more people from different development backgrounds to, to be able to configure and deploy Kubernetes and anything related cloud native. Um, and then the last thing I'm gonna mention, I know it's not gonna be very technically infused, however, I think we need to work better at developer retention as well. Um, it's not necessarily like what, what's missing in terms of technology aspect, but we definitely need to make sure that all of these projects are gonna be long, long standing as well. So I think this is like an ongoing theme that I just cannot not mention it, so here we go. Um, I, I think we know that sometimes for uh, same uh, space of problems, we have uh, multiple projects. I think it's not very easy for the end user to choose, you know, oh, which one should I use uh, or should I, should I deploy. I think one way we can help with that is we, we can have very good document on what are the you know, overlapping functionality, what are the differences, what are the different uses scenarios, and also the um, architecture difference, right? And uh, it's, it will be better if we can have the pros and cons of each part, each part is there. What is the pros and the cons? I think that, and the uses scenarios, I think that's a very important to help user to choose, say, okay, for my scenario, which one I should is better for my user scenario. Yeah. All right, I'll mention something as well. Uh, I think w one thing where there's still work to do is the area of managing multiple clusters. Uh, it's a common part pattern that has been picked up for a while now. And not only managing those clusters and the applications, but also handling like scheduling of applications across multiple clusters. Uh, it's something that quite a lot of people struggle with. And uh, it, there, has, there have been multiple efforts to try to solve it, but I don't think we're there yet. So there's still space there. I think there's still a bunch of gaps around developer tooling. And I think you know, we've, we've done a good job of making, you know, getting Kubernetes out there and the bits you need to operate it, but the, the, the whole developer focus, we, we started having a few more developer focused projects recently, but there's still a lot, uh, there's a huge kind of gap there still. And we've got a few WebAssembly projects, which is kind of cool, but um, we, there's lots more scope there too. 
the tooling around what should actually exist um, arguably lacks something. Or as, as Katie mentioned, YAML is nice, but when you look at where it's coming from, it's, it's a serialization format uh, where you have something else which, which, was what, which was compiled into this. And the whole space of defining what should actually be running and what should be deployed is extremely hacky and there's no defective standards in this area. Cool. That's good. So I'll ask, uh, I think, one, more, one, or one or two more questions, and then I'll, we'll hand it off to the uh, audience to, to ask. So, you know, uh, I had a crazy week at KubeCon, probably met, you know, thousands of uh, people, attended a few sessions. You know, what, what was kind of maybe the most interesting thing that you saw or kind of thing that surprised you uh, in terms of maybe like a technology or, or a project? So for, you know, me, uh, I was kind of excited to see how much, you know, people are experimenting with WebAssembly, you know, today. Justin, for example, you know, Docker integrated with, you know, WASM, you know, Edge and, and kind of uh, modified the container uh, DSHIM to, to support that in, in kind of the workflow. So I'd be kind of curious if there's any TOC members of like, what did you see that you thought was like interesting that, you know, caught your attention that, uh, you know, you think is potentially promising for, for the cloud native community, community. Looks like Matt wants to speak about that. Sure. I mean, <clears throat> Excuse me. I was just going to second WebAssembly. I think WebAssembly is one of the neatest things that I've seen in a while with its potential around performance, resource utilization, the security model. Uh, I'm really, the speed at which it's gone from something that we're tinkering with to being something that you can really consider is, is pretty fast. And um, I'll be curious to see where it is a year from now. I expect a lot of great things. Awesome. So well, not necessarily at this conference. Um, I remember early on when I got started in cloud native, the, I was introduced to the idea of a sidecar and like how much coming from former government that sounded like agents on hosts all the time, taking up compute and resources. So it's interesting to start to see projects talk more about sidecarless and what does that mean? But the amount of innovation that can happen on top of that once that's removed from an entire architecture could potentially unlock new technology emergence. Anyone else? Uh, I think I want to add on what Emily just said. I think uh, one uh, interesting part is uh, proxies uh, service mesh. I think that one, you know, um, it will help, you know, reduce the over overhead of the sidecar. That's a good, that's a very interesting uh, direction. I mean, I always like to see all the new, uh, the new faces at KubeCon, the new people who are coming along for the first time. It's always really exciting to, you know, the people are, people are still coming into this ecosystem. It's still growing. Um, still a lot of work to do to help them. Um, and it's, that's always what I kind of find exciting here. Yeah. Cool, anyone else? Otherwise we'll, I think, oh. One, in th one thing which I find super interesting is that initially cloud was like about breaking out all those old service barriers and making everything horizontally scalable and like making things much more malleable. And you see this trend going backwards again, like it's not all tiny microservices uh, anymore. You have a need for multi-tenancy. There are sidecars, there are service meshes, like all those old concepts of, of how to deal with the total amount of, of complexity are coming back in this pendulum swinging back and forth as we try to figure out um, where the nice point in between is. I just find this super interesting to observe. Um, while not super interesting, uh, what has become important to me is like just seeing the scale of, uh, you know, how many clusters are out there across the cloud providers and how people are able to do day two stuff, um, to upgrades, you know, scale, everything, uh, and how it's become ubiquitous now uh, with almost, like you saw some numbers, right? Like Gartner was talking about like 95% of new projects will end up uh, using some Kubernetes Angular. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to get boring, <laughs> so it's not interesting, but there is still a lot of activity coming from the Kubernetes team. So, um, you know, there are certainly challenges around like upgrades and uh, things like that, 
but we would welcome more participation in the different projects, not just Kubernetes, to make the ecosystem healthy and make sure that uh, it's going to there, it's going to be there to serve you in the you know future. Thank you, Th thank you, Dims. So uh, we're kind of a little bit about halfway through, so um, I'd love to kind of turn it over to the audience. The whole purpose of this kind of session is really to kind of introduce people to TOC, humanize, make it more, make them more accessible to, to everyone to ask, you know, questions. Um, so does anyone have questions out there that they would like to ask the Steam TOC? There's a gentleman in the back with his hand. Uh, so Christoph, think, yeah. So we'll start with you, and then we will see who else. Great, so thank you. Um, so the cloud native space is really broad and a lot of the kind of edges of the space are even growing to things outside of cloud native where a lot of projects are getting use outside of that space. So there's been some discussion about potentially dual homing projects or uh, things like this with things like the open SSF and I just wanted to know people's thoughts about it. Thanks so much for the question, Justin. It's funny that you mentioned that. Um, I've actually been in communication with the OpenSSF uh, Technical Advisory Council, as well as our governing board about what does it mean for projects moving forward as more and more foundations set up. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of overlap between the projects mm -hmm. and the efforts and initiatives. So um, I, I believe that the CNCF, uh, TOC, OpenSSF, TAC, and other foundations are starting to figure out what does that look like, because we still want to be able to empower all of the projects underneath mm -hmm. each foundation in the way that those foundations are set up to be run and those projects are established to be governed, mm -hmm. but still allow that um, open collaboration across mm -hmm. different groups, because ultimately, there's only a few folks with certain specialty skills mm -hmm. that can translate between the different foundations, and we certainly don't want to be pilfering talent from one another when collectively we need to move forward together. Yeah, there, there is an open GitHub issue, I think, where this is being, um, you know, discussed that you kind of follow. And, you know, from a Linux Foundation, you know, perspective, a lot of these things are structured, you know, differently. You know, some are more focused maybe on specs or communities of practice. Some are security focused, right, maybe more policy. So, you know, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, people have realized this is somewhat maybe confusing for end users and we need to figure out how to, you know, work together in a way that makes sense, that doesn't make like the legal side of like who makes decisions, who owns things, how that's governed, uh, and it doesn't confuse that, that aspect with the actual needs of, of the community. Go ahead. Right. Um, one sec, <laughs> I'll finish this. Um, so, uh, so far it's been like people floating around the different organizations, but you know, the, we have done it before, right? Like OCI, ARC, and uh, projects here uh, overlap a lot because both deal mm -hmm. with containers. Um, so w I would like to turn that question to ask, what is it like that you would see as a benefit of the collaboration and how, what it should look like going forward that will help inform us on what we need to mm -hmm. do on our end? Yeah, that, that's great. And in fact, I was going to have a follow-on comment, which is to say I'm really happy with everything the CNCF has provided for Tuff and in Toto, and mm -hmm. you know, think overall the CNCF does just an amazing job. Um, and so, I, from my standpoint, I, I guess my view is is that it's another way that the word gets out about our projects to other communities. Because one of the problems that we had early days with Tuff. Um, was getting people to see it as something that, that was useful outside of cloud native. And then um, once we in fact rebranded it as a new name, Uptain, that is now very widely used. I was just at a conference last week where thousands of IoT companies are all using it for different things that they're doing. And so we might, I think we probably actually have more use outside of cloud native mm -hmm. than we do in cloud native, but we kind of rebranded as, as part of that. And so um, I, I don't really know the answer to that question. You all have been great, but we're viewing it as another community that can ring the bell and say, this is something that's useful outside of cloud native as well as in the domain. Uh, there are definitely marketing aspects that will be useful for sure. Um, you know, we have to also figure out like what is the community collaboration looks like as well. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Two, two hands up, up here. I don't know who was first. So. <laughs> yeah. 
So this is not actually a question, but my comment on that, based on the, the having been to the Kubecon the lots of previous years, because most of, do you have any plan to have a, you know, plan to encourage those projects to share the failure, not success, sorry. Because we, when you know, Dan Kong is you know, on the stage, he tried to ex, you know, present lots of failure story, not, but not, not only for the success story, but so that most of the people think that you know, failure is going to be the inevitable. But you can get back from failure to be successful. So right now, most of the keynote speech, keynote presentation is more like, a, we are good, we are great, we are so good. <laughs> People, we love you, so that kind of thing. But, you know, the crowd native is more like, you know, the failure is the, the fact or maybe is, is included. And then we have to make it to more reliable based on the failure to recovery with those kind of things. So do you have any plan to encourage those pr projects to share their failure story or something? I, there's a there's isn't there like there's a the famous like Kate's fail site uh, whatever it is which is hilarious. <laughs> but. So we did start one uh, as a community member started and all of us contributed to it. It's called Kubernetes.af. Um, so if you go there, you will see all the horror stories. Uh, and we always encourage people to post their own um, you know journey, so to say. Um, there are, I mean, if you just Google for it, you will see uh, why I didn't use Kubernetes, right? Like, there's lots of stories like that. Um, we talk about the failures all the time, uh, you know, what went wrong and why we were not able to get a feature or like, we had a feature, we are gonna drop it because it was not working properly, right? So we talk about failures all the time. Um, Yes, we need to figure out how to do this in this environment where 60% are newcomers who don't know, what, you know, so it might turn them off a little bit. So, you know, yes, you're right. Uh, we should do more of it, and people will learn more from it um, than all success stories. Yes, thank you. I have a comment to this one as well. Um, actually, while you, whilst you're asking a question, I realized we don't really talk too much about our archived projects because they were actually very successful at the time when they entered the space and they were archived and this is a very normal step throughout the life cycle. It just didn't reach, for example, maybe the, or didn't cover all the use cases that we had within the adoption base. So I think maybe we definitely should have a highlight session of why the projects were archived and, and celebrated because they actually did a lot of, they had a lot of impact on the ecosystem and we actually should treat it as such. So I think this is definitely something that I will think I will submit as a next keynote or on the keynote yeah. talk. <laughs> you cannot submit a keynote, but you can definitely submit a talk. So I think that's going to be a very good, um, insightful uh, journey for the projects as well, not just from the adoption side, I think. So yeah, thank you for the question. Very good pointer. We'll take that feedback as maybe to the program chairs of KubeCon. Maybe we need like a fail track. Like let's talk about like yeah. Yeah. all this stuff or tag fail. Uh, <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's good. And then I think, uh, no, uh, one more question. Yeah, uh, so about the sandbox process. So we have a new sandbox process that's uh, on GitHub right now, and we've all talked about it. Uh, what future improvements would you like to see to the process, and is there anything that community members can do to help it? So I want to just clarify, are you talking specifically about Sandbox or about all of the, the entire graduation cycle? So we actually had an excellent meeting earlier this week with a lot of the tag chairs. Um, a lot of them were able to make it in person, some of them were available online, but it was a good opportunity for us to hear a little bit more about their concerns with the current process because we do still have some communication challenges um, and ensuring the things that the TOC discusses and gets out of our head are conveyed in a way that's actually actionable both for the projects themselves but also the tags because we really rely on their expertise of the various domains that they cover to assist us and extend our body of knowledge so it's relevant and actionable for those projects. So as a result of that, we've been really thinking through how we can go about changing sandbox to incubation, how do we set projects up for greater success, how do we allow them to do better self-governance and ensure that the kind of like 
road bumps and detours that often happen with projects aren't a new learning experience for every project every single time. So if that means defining milestones for projects to hit before they're eligible for application to incubation, maybe that is getting sponsorship or recommendations for multiple tags who have looked at the project of their various domains, because a lot of this stuff overlaps. If it's security, if it's networking, if it's storage, anything like that getting that feedback from them, and also that drives a lot more contributions back into the tags as well. So we're, we're considering a lot of changes, but we really need the community feedback, those who have been through the process and understand everything, to help us out. I think also, uh, part, of, part of the reason we've been changing the sandbox process a few times is just it's been incredibly successful. We've let an awful lot of projects in, and there's still more and more demand to come in. So I think, you know, it's really, um, you know, we know, we, we know that the backlog's too long, it takes too long. Like, the, the, all the original changes were to make this process faster, but it's still, it's still having to scale up because there's more and more demand, and, and we have a lot more projects now. So we know we're, a bit, we know we're kind of overwhelmed by the, by the number of projects we have to review, and we're trying to get, make it easier and, um, and continue to make it easier. Yeah. Um, so you might have <clears throat> noticed a trend that we are using, which is when we are having a discussion, we try to put it in an issue so we don't lose track of it, right? And <clears throat> when people come to the Slack channel and say, hey, this is broken or this is not working, we say, go file an issue. So we don't tra lose track of the things that you are telling us what is broken, right? So uh, this feedback loop and doing it asynchronously helps a lot. We, uh, earlier, we used to try to do things in a Google Doc and get to a consensus and things like that. It was very hard, and like all of us have like Google Docs going way back, which we never did anything about, right? Uh, or it was hard at that time, right? Like we, we kind of reached consensus, but then you know something came up or something dropped, so our focus changed, and then you know we left. So we are trying to do this consciously, so you can hold us accountable uh, for the things that you have told us that we need to worry about or fix or change. So we are trying to do that consciously uh, now. Um, so, and we are inviting people to like help with PRs to existing documents and uh, such as well. So if we want to, it you know we can't do it without you all, right? Like so. I would like you to participate, not just in the tags, in the TOC also. Um, okay, two minutes, thank you. So. Um, I think there's another um, missing part we can help is, uh, we can uh, help connect uh, the um, projects which need more contributors to people who would like to contribute. Because sometimes we find out the project and do not meet the requirement is not because not enough people are working on it, right, for every aspect. And then there are some people we know from some companies who like to contribute, but they don't know which one, you know, best match their skill set or which one need contributors. So we're working with a contributor strategy tag. There's a that tag on a, like, contributor board, which, you know, you can go and then, you know, to reach out to them to tell them, you know, what contributors you need, you need, right, in which area. And then they will try to help to match that. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, we're basically out of time. So I uh, wanted to say two things. Um, TOC is, tries to be very accessible. There's a Slack channel. There's open meetings. Please join those. Um, one important thing to note is uh, we will have elections soon, so uh, there'll be a blog post uh, coming soon and, and, and in an upcoming TOC, TOC meeting, we will mention uh, the whole process. So if you're interested uh, in running and trying to figure out how that all works, uh, stay tuned. We'll have all those details out there pretty soon, but thank you for uh, attending and, and thank you TOC members for, for being here and, and supporting the, the community. So thank you all to attend and hopefully you enjoy the rest of, of KubeCon. So, yeah.